What's up, guys? It's October, so it's spooky season, and so I'm in the middle of trying to finish my Necromancer character. I've been working on the high poly slowly. I haven't had a whole lot of time to chip away at it, but I think it would be a really cool goal to finish it in October. Uh, we'll see. I probably won't, but that's what I'm aiming for. So hopefully we can get a lot of good videos out of the process and finishing this character up. We've been doing a lot of ZBrush stuff, so I'd really like to jump out of ZBrush and look at some painter and some rendering and lighting and baking and stuff like that. So hopefully it's a busy month, um, but we'll see. I just wanted to do a quick video on some different kinds of curve brushes in ZBrush. Not the curve two brushes that we've talked about in the past, but these are the knife slice trim and clip brushes. These are really powerful brushes that can work in conjunction with one another to get you some really cool results and help you very quickly cut up your armor and turn something from a concept to workable geometry that you can actually use for your final sculpt. So why don't we talk about these a little bit and I'll show you my process. So the first thing we need is some geometry and I have this torso mesh that I just extracted from the body of my character. And I'm just gonna very quickly rough out some shapes that we're gonna actually slice into separate plates then I can begin sculpting and creating my high poly on. So I'm just basically using this as a template to rough out the concept, the idea, the proportions of all of the different geometry that I want on this torso piece. And then once I have a good idea of what I want, we can begin slicing it up into geometry that we're actually going to sculpt on. Now that we have that, I'm going to add a little bit of thickness to this just to help demonstrate these brushes a little bit better. So I'm just going to go do dynamic and turn on the thickness slider a little bit. And then I'm going to hit apply to apply that thickness. And that's just going to give us a bit of thickness and it's going to help illustrate what these brushes do a little bit better. So to access these curve brushes, you hold control shift on your keyboard and go up to your brush panel and click. And you'll see all of the different kind of slice, knife, trim, clip brushes that you can access. And there's different versions of these brushes. There's a lasso version, a circle version, a rectangle version but we're gonna be focusing on the curve versions because I think they're not only the most useful, but the, if you understand those, it's very easy to understand the other ones because they're just simple versions of these. So we're gonna go through each one and explain what they do. And then I'm gonna show you how to put them to use. First up, we have the clip curve brush. And if you hold control shift, you can drag and you'll see we have this line that follows our cursor. You can drag that through the mesh and it's gonna cut it. It's gonna cut it in half. It kind of slices the mesh, but then squishes what the top projection was down. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but if you see it on the screen, you'll understand it a little bit more. Now with the knife brush, if we repeat the same thing we did with the clip brush, you'll see it cuts it a lot more cleanly and it actually keeps that thickness we have. And with the knife brush, you have to have thickness in order for that brush to work. If it's just a plane or an object that doesn't have any depth to it, the knife brush won't execute properly. So that's something to keep in mind when using the knife brush. Next, we have the slice brush. And you'll see when we repeat what we did with the previous two brushes, nothing happens. But actually, if you turn on your poly frame, you'll see what this brush does is it creates new poly groups. So wherever you slice, it creates a new poly group. So if you wanted to quickly cut your mesh up into a bunch of different poly groups, this is a great way to do that. And lastly, we have the trim curve brush. The trim curve acts very similar to the first two brushes. However, it caps your geometry with a close holes function so that it doesn't retain the same depth and it doesn't do the squishing thing that slice does. So you'll see, while all of these will cut your mesh where you put that stroke, the way they cap it off and close it is different. And here's just a quick example of all three of them. So we can compare the differences between each of these three brushes. Next, let's talk about how you actually can control the curve. Firstly, when you hit control, shift, and drag, if you hold the space bar, you can move the whole stroke around. So you can draw it in one area and then move it to somewhere else on the screen. Next, you can make it curve. So at any time as you're drawing your stroke, you can tap Alt, and it's gonna create a point that lets you then bend it in a new direction. So you can bend it, hit Alt, bend it, hit Alt, and kind of draw a curve around your shape. Now, if you double tap Alt, it'll create a hard point. So you can basically have it be a very hard angular cut versus the curve when you just hit Alt once. So hitting Alt once creates a nice smooth curve. Hitting Alt twice 
creates a split point. So let's look at how you can use these brushes in practice. I'm going to go ahead and start by using the knife brush. I think the knife brush is probably the best of the set and just reacts in a way that you would really expect one of these brushes to work, but they each have their uses. So remember, in order for the knife brush to work properly, we need the mesh to have depth. And so to fake that, I'm just going to go ahead and run a close holes and that's going to close the arm and neck areas of my mesh. So it's going to consider it watertight and just help the knife brush to work a little bit better. Now, since we have a concept sculpt that we're working from, we know that there's a bunch of different plates that we want to cut up. And just for safety's sake, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my mesh first so I have a backup when I go to do this. And every time I go to repeat this process, I duplicate my mesh again. So I always have the original one to go back to. And I'm going to start by just cutting off areas that I don't need. So I'm going to cut the back off. I'm going to cut the bottom off. And you'll note that there's a little shadow on the side of the stroke as you're doing your knife. And this indicates which side is actually going to get deleted. So make sure that you're drawing that stroke in a way that the shadow is in the correct position so that it cuts your mesh correctly. Now that I have the excess cut off, I'm going to use the Alt key and tab around and start kind of trimming areas on my mesh that I don't need until I just have the chest plate. And don't worry about trying to do this symmetrically because we can just use mirror and mirror and weld to duplicate the result. And so it's much easier just to do it on one side and then use mirror and weld to get the result on the other. I strongly recommend working that way instead. Once we have our shape cut out, since this is the knife brush, we're gonna have geometry in the back of the mesh. And so you can just go ahead and do control shift click to isolate the poly group of the front of your chest plate and then do a delete hidden to get rid of all the excess geometry that you don't want. From here, it's kind of up to you how you want to work. For me, I like to then Z remesh this down to a really low polygon count so that it's nice and easy for me to manipulate and really get the shape right. And then you can go ahead and add thickness or start sculpting on it. Um, if you're doing something more realistic or doing like a really damaged, say like, like orc plate that has a lot of dings and damage, you might not have to worry about having really clean geometry. You might be able to just kind of add some thickness and then just start sculpting on this and add damage and wear and dings and not have to worry about it being super clean. But since this is kind of a stylized character where I'm looking for really clean shapes, it's important to me to zero mesh that down to a clean topology that's really easy for me to use the move tool to get the results that I need. Once I'm happy with that plate, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process for all the other plates on the model. And remember that I'm duplicating my mesh each time I do a new one so that I don't lose my original mesh. We're going to skip ahead a little bit since this is kind of repetitive, but I think you get the idea of being able to slice and dice your meshes to get the result that you want. And then once you're finished, you have separate sub tools of all the different plates or all the different armor pieces for your character. And I would recommend taking all of those and then creating a group and then throwing them in like a group called torso because suddenly you've gone from like one mesh to having like 15 or however many pieces that your character might have. So definitely recommend it for organization. And definitely explore with the different curve brushes to see which one works for you. I like the knife brush, but each of them have a purpose and might benefit you in some way. So definitely play around with each one to see the different results and figure out which ones might work for your application. And just to kind of wrap it up towards the end here, I really want to reinforce that these aren't just good for armor. These are really, really good hard surface brushes for ZBrush. So if you need any kind of like mechanical piece or you're trying to get like a tech piece for a gun or something like that, you can use these brushes to cut really clean lines and shapes and get the results that you want for hard surface stuff in ZBrush. So you can pair this with Z Remesher, with Z Modeler, with all kinds of different things and pretty much be able to create anything that you need all within ZBrush. So very, very cool and definitely and definitely some good tools to have at your disposal. And you'll see too in this example how the topology changes based on the clip or the knife brush. Um, the knife brush really attempts to give you somewhat of clean topology, like it doesn't try to leave floating verts and stuff like that. So. There is benefits to each one. All right, guys, I think that wraps this one up. I just wanted to show you those brushes. If you're not familiar with them, I think they're really great. 
And I am working on a bigger video for the whole process of building the high poly model of this armor and this character. Um, I'll try to get that one out as soon as possible, but in the meantime, I'll try to put out some shorter videos as well. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and don't stop creating. I'll see you next time. Take care.